Matthew chapter 10, very familiar passage of scripture. Before we left for, for Africa, there were several things that the Lord was sharing with me over a period of time, a few months even, and um, just bits and pieces. And, you know, remember a few weeks ago I talked to you about making sure you capture your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Right? Capture, capture your thoughts. And um, this is two parts. I'm going to give you the first part. And the second part we'll revisit later, but it's, it's really about how to help people, how to come alongside people, how to, how to help people. Let's, let's read, and then I'll share my thoughts, and I'll be done here. I, 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 did I say Matthew 10? Yeah. First, first let, don't go there first. Go to, look at, hold your place there. Look at Revelation 3.20, very familiar passage of Scripture. I don't want to misquote it. We, we probably all can quote it, but in, instead of missing it, let's read it. Reading from the uh, English Standard, uh, Revelation 3:20. Here's here's what the Lord said. Now, now, if you have a red letter edition, almost all well, all of Revelation chapter three is in red. So who's talking? Jesus. Okay, 3:20. Listen to what he says. <clears throat> Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him. And he with me, okay? And so here, here's, the, here's the issue. We meet all, all kinds of people in all kinds of places. And, and the issue is, is that if you were in a bad place, God doesn't want to leave you in a bad place. Amen. He doesn't. If you, listen to me. If you are in a good place, God, it is the will and the purpose of God to even bring you to a better place. It is. Yeah. It is. Amen. He's the God of more than. Right. Wasn't that the goal? Wasn't that the purpose to move Israel from a place of not enough to a place called more than? Yeah. Yeah. Right? And, and in between, they were in a place called just enough. Mm -hmm. Right? Just enough bread for today. Amen. Just enough water for today. I can't get no help. That's right. Amen. Y'all making me work too hard. This, this is a shame. Okay? And, and, and so God said, this place of just enough is not my will for you. I want to bring you to a place that is flowing with milk and honey. Right? I want you to live in houses you didn't build. I want you to reap from fields you didn't plant. I, I, I want you to live in a place of the overflow. And so it is the purpose of God to move us along. But God never breaks in on us. He stands at the door and he knocks. And he knocks. Jesus never just comes in. He is knocking. He stands on the outside of a door with an offer for you to go higher in him, deeper in him, have more of him, more in him. But he never. And if anybody can get in, he can get in. Ask the disciples who were sequestered in a room with all the doors locked. All the windows closed, and the Bible says, suddenly Jesus stood in their midst. Yeah. It's not that he can't get in, but there are some things he is only going to do by your invitation. Yeah. Anybody need to give him an invite? Yeah. There's some things he is only going to do if you invite him in. There is a level and a degree of peace that you will only have if you ask Jehovah Shalom, yeah. come on in and do your work. There is a level of joy that you will only have if you open the door and let the joy of your salvation come in. Boy, you're preaching this is so good to me. My Lord, are you, are you getting this? And so he's knocking. And sometimes our tendency is to come alongside some people to try to help them. And you can't be Jesus in somebody else's life. Amen. Say that again in my calm voice. You cannot be Jesus in someone else's life. If, if this sermon had a title or, or theme or purpose, it's, it's, I guess it would be how to come alongside others or how to help others. But before the, you can help somebody, I want to help the helper. Yes, sir. Can I help the helper today? Is it okay? How many helpers in the room? Let's throw my hand up. 
<laughs> you have to be careful because you'll come across people who will let you work harder in their situation than they work. They'll let you do everything. You okay? So the first thing we want to do is help the helper. Can you go back to Matthew, chapter number 10? Matthew 10. Let's start with verse number 5. The Bible says, These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them, Go nowhere among the Gentiles. Understand the assignment now. Go nowhere among the Gentiles. And enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And proclaim as you go, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Listen to what he says. Heal the sick. That, that, that brother in my office about that. Because mm -hmm. here's the command. Heal the sick, right? Raise the dead. Cleanse the leper. Cast out demons. You have received without pain. Give without pain. Other translations of King James may say, freely you have received. Freely give. Freely give. Amen. With a $50 prayer line, a healing line, a prophecy line, or anything like that. Anyway, anyway, anyway. <laughs> Verse number nine. You will get that on the ride home. Verse number nine. Acquire no gold or silver or copper for your belts, no bag for your journey, or tunics or sandals or a staff, for the laborer deserves his food. Right? Other, other versions may say the laborer is worthy of his hire or something to that effect. Verse number 11, and whatever town or village you enter, find out who is worthy in it and stay there until you depart. Look at somebody and say, this is how to help the helper. This is how to help the helper. Verse number 12, as you enter the house, greet it. And if the house is worthy, listen, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. Let me stop right there. From this verse, the Lord dropped in my spirit and said to me, don't leave your peace. Don't leave your peace. You, you will always have an opportunity to go someplace and serve and encounter somebody who doesn't recognize either you or what you bring of the kingdom. Jesus said, if they're not worthy, Go on and leave, but don't leave your peace behind. Are you? you? You, if you don't understand the value of shalom, that's on you. I do. And I'm not going to leave what I deem valuable with someone who sees no value in it at all. Are you all? They said, well, Pastor Bill, I'm not sure that that's godly. Then you talk to Jesus because he's the one who said it. Amen. He said, if they don't receive it, then you get your peace. Mm -hmm. You put it in your pocket and you go ahead on and leave. Yeah. How about John? St. John chapter number 14 and verse number 27. I, I, I want you to see the value of your peace. I want you to see how valuable your peace is. And even if the folks you're dealing with don't understand and see the value of your peace, you have to recognize how valuable it is. Okay, Mike, I'm, I'm ready. Listen, Jesus said, peace I leave with you. Listen, whose peace? He said, my peace I give to you. Oh, that puts peace at another, that, that puts it on another level. It's, it's more powerful than that. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Listen, not as the world gives do I give to you. Don't, don't, don't. So, so, so don't let your heart be troubled. Don't forfeit. Don't give up. Don't leave with somebody who sees no value in it, the thing that I've given to you. Right, does this make sense? Is this resonating in your spirit? Jesus said, you, you're coming here and you, you're, you're proclaiming the gospel. You're here to do the work of the kingdom. And if people don't receive you, it's okay. Go on and leave, but don't leave your peace. Because you're going to need your peace. And don't, Samuel, Samuel got a, Samuel had an issue 
Because Samuel thought that the, the rejection of the people was towards him. Sometimes when you try to help somebody and they don't receive your help, you take it personally. Yeah. Y'all ain't going to say amen. Amen. God said this to Samuel, he said, they're not rejecting you. Get out yourself. He said, they're rejecting me. People aren't rejecting you. Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and I'm not. They're rejecting Jesus. Stop making yourself on his level. You're not. They're rejecting him. Don't leave your peace. When you get rejected, and you will be rejected. Amen. Don't let it disturb your peace. Don't leave your peace at the place or point of rejection. Are you okay? I mean, you loving people hard, but just cause you loving them don't mean they're loving you back. You're offering the best you have to people. Just because you're offering the best don't mean there are some people who, who are accustomed to stuff that's not so good. Okay. You let your peace come upon it, but if it is if but if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And listen, and if anyone will not receive you or listen to your words, this is verse 14, or listen to your word, let shake the dust from your feet when you leave that house or town. Now listen, I can I just can I have five minutes? Because you gotta understand this this is an idiom, this Hebrew idiom. Um, when Jesus says, shake the dust off your feet. Now, now you gotta understand, we understand that that here. In, in the first century, it, their classism was the, was the thing, right? The Jews thought, they just knew they were better than everybody else. Mm -hmm. And so here, here's what the Jews would do. When the Jews would, would come in contact with uh, somebody who was a Gentile, or um, they would be in a Gentile's house, or, or for whatever reason, they, they didn't want to be there. They didn't want to be there, but if they had to, when they got finished, when, when, they, when, when the encounter with the Gentile was over, here's what the Jewish person would do right in front of them. Shake themselves. As if to shake off the contact of someone who was less than them. Yeah, are you okay? Now, don't, now Jesus said, shake it off. And who are the disciples going to here? The Jews. the Jews. He said, don't go to any Gentiles. Don't, don't go to any town or village of the Samaritans. He said, but go to the lost sheep of the house of where? Israel. So Jesus says, you go to the Jews. You take the message of the kingdom. You let them know Messiah, uh, Yeshua HaMashiach, is on the scene. He has come as Savior of the world. And if the Jews don't receive you, do to them what they would do to folks they saw as less than. Mm. Because when you refuse Jesus and all that he brings, oh, it puts you. Oh, yeah. He says, shake it off and keep it moving. Y'all remember that commercial about American Express that said, don't leave home? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I found out about peace? You can't hardly stay home without it. <laughs> You'll get that on the right home, too. <laughs> if your husband or your wife is here, don't even look at them. But you know, if peace is that essential. It's that vital. You can't afford to make a move without it. God reminded me, don't leave your peace in the midst of this situation. I've given you a precious and a valuable thing, and you hold on to it. And then when you go to help, if your help is not received, you got to shake off rejection so you can be fit and ready to serve in the next place. Right. Some of us can't help here because we're still crying about over here. Yeah. That's right. There absolutely positively has to be a, an internal transition made. If not, you just carry old baggage into a new situation. 
And before you know it, the new looks just like, sounds like, tastes like, acts like, walks like the old situation. And let me tell you, if it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, looks like a duck, situations that you are going to have to just shake off so you can stay on assignment. Are you alright? Okay. That's, that's, listen, that's help for the helper. That's help for the helper. You, 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 you've got to go into the assignment bearing that in mind. That just because I'm here to help doesn't mean I'm going to be received. And if I'm not received, I'm not going to let this keep me from the next thing. That's right. That's right. Amen. The woman came to our church some years ago, and she came. She came. I, it was church hurt, and um, and uh, I said, "Wow, that's interesting." And and uh, she said, "Yeah, just it was bad." And it, it, it and it and it said, "Church hurt is the worst kind of hurt." Listen, any kind of hurt is the worst kind of hurt. It's the worst kind of hurt when you hurt it. It's such a bogus thing. Church hurt is the worst hurt. No, fall down and bust your head. <laughs> You're going to be laying there like, but now this is the worst hurt I ever felt. You ain't even thinking about church hurt no more. The, the worst hurt is the hurt you're currently having. We try to make the, the church like this bad. It's not. It's not. And, and so she was bad, and, and, and the former pastor was very involved in the hurt. And uh, she just went through this whole litany of things. And I said, wow, you know, I, well, praise the Lord. We love you, and we're going to be praying for you, and, and so on and so forth. But I told her, I said, here's what's got to happen. I said, you have to be willing to submit to a process. And she said, the healing process. I said, yes, the healing process. But here's typically what's happened. The hand that hurts you, that typically sends healing through a similar hand. I says, I said, so if the, if the hurt came through a pastor, guess what? Healing. I'm not saying you're going to be willing for us to be close enough for me to pour in, pour in the oil and the wine. Because it's not just the injured who gets the oil and the wine on them. Don't forget, it's the surgeon that wears the gloves. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Are you? There's a reason, right? There's a reason he's all gowned up and masked. Because he's going to get some on him. Yeah. And so today we want to help the helpers. We hope you enjoyed this message and were blessed by it. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us on Facebook for more ministry and information.